here I am with uh, Stéphanie Dustrac, who is with us from France. I am still in California. Stéphanie is a mezzo-soprano of uh, word fame. She is, uh, for me, I, would, I cannot say the best Carmen because I'm going to alienate some of your colleagues, but she's one of the two best Carmens in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we did... We clever. did very yeah, clever. That's safer. <laughs> And, and we did Carmen together in Dallas uh, in a production of uh, David McVicker. Uh, and your Carmen is extraordinary. I have done so many Carmen uh, because the, the, the balance between the theatrical aspect of Carmen, the understanding of the French prosody and the musical qualities are just all together and you don't know which one is which. And it works with uh, an incredibly powerful delivery um and 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 yes it's it's absolutely absolutely uh, stunning and we can talk about carmen we can talk about uh, other roles um but stephanie you are also working mostly actually in europe have you have you worked a lot in the us no 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 rarely uh, i would say rarely and you you are you, you also do concert work correct you like to sing in concerts or you you the main activity for you is opera still my main activity is opera singer because i love acting as you know right and, and i would say because i have a child so for me america was a bit too far for a, for a mm. while mm. now she's uh, 19 so mm. it's okay i can go i can come <laughs> right right well, and, 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 but what was your, your expectations and what, how was it different when you arrived in the States and work in the States? How, how was the organization of the work, the, the, the rehearsals? Did you find a lot of differences? Not that much. Not that it's much. Difference, but it's very professional. Mm -hmm. um, um, very nice, very warm. Mm -hmm. Very well, and no, no, and we we worked well, very efficient. Yeah. Um, but we had time to work. We had yeah. time to rehearse. Right. So for me, I like I like to rehearse. I like to have time to to see my colleagues, to know them better, and that's why I'm because I love acting. So I need to know them and to to know how far I can go. Mm -hmm. uh, all together, mm -hmm. how can we, how we react uh, mm -hmm. eat together and each other. So I think it, yeah, I, I, I had a real pleasure because we had time. Right. And it's, it was a, a, a one, it's a wonderful produ production of David McVicker. We always mm -hmm. has a very deep understanding of the theatrical aspect of the opera, but who is again able to connect it to the music in a very smart way. Um, and where do you, we did the, the version with dialogues, which is always, you know, the big question with Carmen. What, what's, what's your choice? Do you prefer to do Carmen with dialogues or do you sometimes do like the, 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 the Giro dialogues? No, because I'm, I'm a French, I'm French. So it's <laughs> much easier for me. So of course, and I, I love acting. So I feel comfortable. Uh, with di dialogues, but I understand for uh, foreigners it's much more difficult. Um, so, for example, in Dallas they were very well prepared, but of course for the pronunciation and to be more natural. Uh, I, I, so I, I I helped them to take time finally because even right. you know with the distance we can take time and always. Foreigners, and I think it's the same for me, for example, in Germany, in mm. German, for example, to speak, we try to speak as a um, modern way. Uh, yes. But I said, no, 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 we are on stage. So take yeah. your time, you know, we yeah. need, we don't need to rush and right. take your time also to feel for real uh, right. the emotion and yeah, the, 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 the link between emotion and words. So right. we, we must have time. Right, right. And, and I think this, this worked perfectly. I find in common the difficulty sometimes if the dialogues are too long, 
it's hard to get back in the music. And so you have, as a conductor, for instance, you have to get the energy back to get the, the singers in another dimension, in another way of thinking. And then there is sometimes a difference in the level of volume of the voices between the speaking voice yeah. and the, the orchestra singing voice. So sometimes we amplify the, 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 the dialogues and then people in the house say, well, the, the voice is right. bigger spoken than, yeah. than the song voice. Um, and added to what you were referring to, which is the understanding of the audience and of the singers themselves, it, 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 it sometimes is safer to do the, 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 the music. Porter or music. But I would say this production of David McVicka was created in Glyndebourne, mm -hmm. in a little theater. theater. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think he kept all these big dialogues and even he kept a lot because I did some others. It was much shorter. Right. Uh, uh, and so that's it. And I think when we are acting just without music, we have to keep the same energy and right. how to make it alive without music and then jump with music. And, and I think in Glyborn it worked because it's a small place. Right, right, right. And you're right. When that connection works, then it has a flavor that gives to the music even a theatrical aspect that it doesn't have if you have music all the time. And also I like what we did, which is to preserve some of the spoken dialogues over music. So then yes. all those things, they overlap more, more, more naturally. Um, Stephanie, you, you are now a reference for Carmen. I mean, do you, do you enjoy that or do you say, I remember at the beginning of my career, I was getting offers for Carmen and Hoffman all the time everywhere. And I was almost regularly turning them down. Now I'm happy. Anytime I can do a Carmen, I'm happy to do Carmen. I mean, conducting it, not singing it. Uh, <laughs> what, what's, what's your feeling with that character and, and with this role at this time in your career? I always, I would say I always, I, I don't sing it that much, uh -huh. I would say. I, I'm lucky. I mix a lot. Right. Um, but... Um, I would say I always enjoy first because the music is full of energy. Right. Full of energy. Just for that, I would say I will sing it as long as I can. Mm -hmm. But the energy is coming from, you know, the uh, for real, for inside. This woman, she's modern. Um, all, the, all the feelings we pass through um, are vivid i would say or very very yeah realistic mm -hmm. and so i think i i really enjoy it and and each time for my point of view i am like a blank page mm -hmm. so it's always a new thing for me because the maestro is different mm -hmm. because the staging is different and my colleagues are different so always for me it's a new experience and and i really enjoy all the, all the time do you, do you, I mean, Don Jose is such a weird character and is a, is a dangerous man, obviously, but we have also maybe some tenderness, sympathy. He's a very mm -hmm. weak man too. Um, have you, do you have a preference for a Don Jose who is widely crazy or for the one who has been put in a terrible situation? I mean, how and how do you react with with a colleague that is really scary on stage? Has that even happened to you? Yeah, I <laughs> had this production with um, uh, Cherniakov. Yes, uh, Dmitry Cherniakov, and we did with Michael Fabiano. Mm -hmm. I know he's American, and it was his uh, his first Don Jose in Aix en Provence. I, yes. And these Don Jose get crazy, totally crazy, but in another way. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting altogether to work mm -hmm. because sometimes, yes, on stage, he must scared me for real in a way. And I was, re and I was scared You're for scared. real. Oh God. Yeah, and, and I think it's, it's almost exciting, you know, to, right. to, to cross the line sometimes, to go to right. good. Oh, it has there. to be a little personal. And how did you reconcile backstage after he killed you? Were you? Were you? 
No, we, because I was not dead for real. <laughs> we were not. Okay, good. good. On stage too. Right. When, <laughs> so, what, the deal. so let's let's see a little about um, how you got to the role of, of of Carmen, and even further back, when when did you know you were going to be an opera singer? Ooh. Um, hmm. When I was young, I I was well, very I, asthmatic. No, because very asthmatic and very shy. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, the stage was my... Uh, how Safety. can I say? Oh? It saved you. It helped yes. you. Yes. yes. Yes, for real. For real. Because uh, normally I should take some pills, you know, for asthma. And when I began my studies of music, musical studies, I couldn't, I, I, I didn't need any more. So yes, for real. And now singing, acting, uh, bring me so many joy that I think uh, it's, it's so important, I think, to live in, a, in the way you need, uh, how your passion, and I think I was yeah, passionate about uh, singing and acting always. So it was my yeah, duty. I think it was just my duty. You know, I, I had no choice in a way. It was how, like how old were you when, when you came to that realization? I mean, you were a kid, you were 9, 10? No, 16, 16. Okay. Around, because, uh, before, I didn't know opera at all. It was oh, old-fashioned and yeah. blah. Uh, but then I discovered, because I, I started acting mm -hmm. in the conservatoire, mm -hmm. um, theatre, theatrical, Yep. And then I discovered okay. the operatic uh, right. voice, mm -hmm. and so around sixteen, I, th I thought, okay, probably I could, I could go this way. I can try, and that's it. And it was very straight on. And did you, did you knew, did you know right away that you were a mezzo soprano, or, or yes, no, 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 because I, I sang in soprano, very high soprano, uh -huh. when I was a child. Right. And, uh, and so I wanted to keep this voice right. because it was funny and woo. Yeah. And little by little, it, it became lower and lower. And so I, I took time to, for my mind to accept this voice. Right. So I think that's why for the, at the beginning, I sang in Baroque music more right. Right. because I could have a mixed. Uh, it was not that clear. So I can jump to soprano, to mezzo. Mm -hmm. But then, little by little, I totally accepted my the voice, type of voice, and uh, and then Carmen came almost late in my right. career. Right. And fortunately, I would say, mm -hmm. <laughs> fortunately. Right. And and is the voice getting darker with time? How what's the evolution of the voice right now? I mean, you are definitely mezzo mezzo, uh, and and is it getting deeper mezzo? Mm, I, I, finally, I don't know. I don't want, right. in a way, I don't want to make um, uh, an, yeah, yeah, because I think it depends on the role. Right. I can, I can, I can be darker right. if the role is asking me this. Right. Uh, for example, I would say in Werther, Charlotte, you begin as a young woman uh, with all the life is very light. And little by little, after this pain in love, mm -hmm. uh, her her expectation in life, her um, suffer so the douleur, we oui, her suffering, yes, her, her. Her, exactly. The voice changed, and I think I like to to change also with the character. It's mm -hmm. exactly the same in Carmen. At the beginning, we can. Uh, be more joyful and very light right but sometimes you need to put some more uh, body more uh, strength so i think i i like to modulate right the voice even with the role in the in each uh way you can't sing right. always with the same voice right totally. right. right right and and what what is uh, stunning to me is that the card aria which is you know like almost mezzo contralto sought in general by the mezzo and they start to do chest voice and so on. You just sung it. You just went into the feeling of it in the line of it. And 
I never felt like, oh my God, you know, I have to keep the orchestra quiet. I have to go faster. I have to go. No, just like we were just going through it and, and the delivery and the, the result were, were extremely powerful. Um, does your experience with Baroque singing and Baroque roles, do you feel that's helping you and giving you an advantage uh, compared to your colleagues who have done only the romantic repertoire or the late classic repertoire? I would say, I, I, I won't compare with my colleagues, but I think my experiment or experience um, yeah. is I put the feeling first. Right. So what do I feel in that moment? And also the orchestra at the beginning of the cards are so soft. Yes. And I think we are more inside and, and it's something very deep and very personal and very intimate. So I think we need, we, I, I, I really think my feelings must be the first thing. Uh, and my voice, I don't care in a way, I right. don't care. It's here to, to create emotion mm -hmm. But I, I don't need and I don't want to um, show I have low voice right. or right. No, wh who cares? Right, right. Say. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that is interesting. Um, and that works for Carmen, of course. And Carmen can be sung with so many different voice types. It works for, for, for Charlotte. Um, what about uh, Dalila? Have you have you already gone into that repertoire? No. No, yeah. but I would love it. Yeah, because would... Dalila has, has has moments where she's actually singing, you know, in a way that is almost the 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 the, the vocal um, fabric, the vocal material is is extremely important in that. You have sung the aria in concert already, for instance. No, nothing, no. nothing at all. No. <laughs> No, but I think it's like in Cassandre. Yes. In Troyes, yes. I would say some, sometimes you need the very dark, uh, right. but it's more always for me, it's the expression. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes we need very darkness and, and strength and powerful, but sometimes we, so it's more, it's more with the feelings always. Right, always. right, right. Do you, do you, you have sung Cassandre, huh? you have done Les Troyes. Yes. Yeah. In La Bastille. In Bastille, if you will. And, and My first time. <laughs> uh, you, have, you have to start somewhere. There used to be a rule in the past in those houses, major houses, we talk about this with some of your colleagues, that you are yeah. not allowed to start a role in those houses. But now... I know, the, the, I know. <laughs> so people used to lie about it, you know, and just say, oh, yes, I did it in, in, in uh, whatever, Catalizetta or whatever. Um, this is this is so this works very easily for you because you have this dramatic training because you have this baroque training too where where the attention to the text is is, is extremely important of course it's important in in, in all the contemporary repertoire and yeah but, but yeah but the baroque, the, so, wait. yeah the baroque singers in my in my experience they have that kind of of of, of training that really puts them in a very strong situation there how how many roles have you done in Italian, in, in German, in Russian? How do you feel about that? None in German, finally, because I had to cancel uh, Ariane of Naxos. Oh. And none in uh, Russian. Right. So Italian, English, French. How do, yes. you, so how do you feel about... Because most of your colleagues I've talked to they say, oh, the base of my technique in any language is the Italian technique. You know, they, they all talk about this. And, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and so what's your feeling? I mean, and what are the roles you have done in Italian, if I might ask? A lot of Mozart. Mozart, yeah. um, of course. What else? Uh, always I forgot. Um, um, but Latina or... but I, I'm not agree with this. I'm not yeah. agree because okay. it's... I like that. Okay. Yeah. Because I think it's otherwise it's too much international vocal way right. of singing. Fun. And for me, it's a bit boring. Right. I like, for example, French. It's almost flat. Right. 
It's right. flat. It's white. The, it's flat. 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 You mean you mean white? You know you mean you mean without without. It's clear. The the voice yeah. it must be almost all mm, clear. You yeah. know, clear here. Correct. Correct. And also, but as a singer, I I not to put too much um, palette. Mm -hmm. ooh, ooh, ooh. It's like this. And no, for French, we need to stay down in a way yeah. to be real French. Mm -hmm. So I. I struggle with this and also with my students. I, I try to, no, 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 no. Each language have spe specialties. Mm -hmm. uh, German, it's a very special way to, to Italian. It's more, you know, with all the, the, so for me, I like to sing in a different, I feel also, mm -hmm. you know, in my body, it's different. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. that, 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 I find that fascinating. Uh, uh, have you, in, in the Italian repertoire, have you had to do coloratura, for instance? How do you feel about coloratura? But it depends because now I'm I'm training for um, in Anna Bolena, wow. so I'm coming to right. uh, bel canto repertoire. So right. I'm studying it. You know, wow. I, I, yes, I have a prediction, and maybe you're not going to like it, but that by working in that repertoire, it might affect and positively if possible, you, the way you approach some of the French repertoire, maybe. It could be that you're going to find, you know, some, oh, I have this here, I can use it also at one point to color my voice differently when I do the French repertoire. Don't uh -huh. you? Yeah, exactly. And always, I think, when we work something different, we, we bring it, you know, back to... And you have, Absolutely. I, I mean, the, 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 the core of what I do and where I think I am good is always better when I enlarge my understanding of music and when I go in a repertoire that's not necessarily the center of my repertoire, it's going to make me smarter in my own repertoire. Yeah, I would say, and I, and I hope so. I hope so. That's why I'm going this way, you know, to, right. to explore a new type of uh, vocality, I, I, I think. Mm. Um, but... But I don't want to sing all, you know, all my character in the same way. No, uh, no. And, I, and I think that... to put some, you know, exactly to put some. Right. Ah, yes, I can I can go this way now? Right. And okay. I can. Yeah, yeah. To have more no, fun. I think it, 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 makes, it makes total sense. And what you say about, you know, everybody singing the same way on all the great stage in the world and the small stage in the world that has been reinforced to by by recordings and broadcasts in general. And so everybody wants to sound like uh, this singer or that singer, I'm not even going to, to, to give names, and, 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 and we're losing specificity. Same thing for instrumental playing, you know, the, mm -hmm. kind of, the size of the whole and, and, and you expect the brass to sound a certain way and then the strings have to play more to match that sound and then it changes the phrasing in general and the expression in general and and that is that is really a pity have you done uh, a lot of contemporary music and operas so far no no just some a few, a few not that much no no not that much what what are the roles that you are dying to sing and that you have not sung <laughs> The next one. <laughs> one. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, do you, you, you have do you have somewhere where you would like? I mean, in the German repertoire, for instance. You, I mean, I'm sure you love some of those. You know, well, I would love, I love. I'm waiting for Octavian. Yes. Okay. I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for. <laughs> okay. I think you, you will be an extraordinary Octavian. You're going to be it's oh. a wonderful Octavian. So I think that's a great idea. You know that that. No, it's Salome that has a French version, uh, but by oh. Strauss himself, he, he rewrote, uh, even reorchestrated part of uh, Salome to just to, to fit with the, the French text. And Salome was written by Oscar Wilde in French originally to go around the censorship. So, so that's interesting. Um, and maybe there is a, a, a French uh, um, Octavian somewhere that we could find. You know? <laughs> No, but let's improve my German <laughs> first. But I would love to make it French. But I would love to. <laughs> so, in in have you worked in? Uh, so you worked in Italy. You worked in France. You worked in Germany too. Did in you Spain? 
in Spain. In, yeah. more, more in Spain. Mm. Um, now I'm going in Japan, uh-huh. in China. Uh-huh. Um, Italy, but not that much. Rome and oh. Milan. Right, right. Um, and after that, more Brussels in Europe. Right. In Europe, Brussels. And, uh, in Brussels, I don't know if you know that, but I think I know the conductor was going to work with you in Brussels. Uh-huh. Come in. Yeah, but no, no, no I found, um, for the ah yes, yes, you're right, but yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's far away. <laughs> and, it's far and, away. Well, yeah, uh, and uh, how do you? I mean, do you find huge differences between these various countries in the way you work? Are you comfortable with? You know, sometimes in Germany you work seven weeks on the concept, and 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 finally you go on stage. In other places, you rehearse two days and that's it, you're done. Do you have any any preferences? I would say I'm lucky. I always had time. So right. probably yeah. they, they invite me mm-hmm. uh, when we have time. Right, they know. They know. I never, I never, in a way, I think I never jumped uh, in two days and pop, 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 right. like, like this. Oop. No, no, you no. Don't. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's another, it's another business. Sometimes it can, yeah. it can give you interesting performances too. Of uh, course. But, 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 yeah, no, no. <laughs> it can be really tough. Um, you were saying that you, you are teaching too. Um, how and how much teaching do you do and how has COVID, you know, changed your general routine and uh, 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 I, were you teaching before COVID started? Yes, it's now six years ago I began teaching for real mm-hmm. um, and in a long way, you know, because before it was just for master classes. So mm-hmm. you just, you know, put some little things and... Mm-hmm. Let's hope. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I can work uh, for three years with students, and it's really interesting to um, ha, to create in a way, or to to create my my um, vision of how to build and to help someone to mm-hmm. to find his proper way. Mm-hmm. Uh, because for me, the most important is. Um, uh, to help them to be independent mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and to be uh, ah, autonomous, self, uh, self-efficient. Yeah, self-efficient. So, for me, the most important because many times we are so uh, fragile. Because right. as soon as the maestro is asking uh, something, and and if you can't make right. it yeah, properly in the technique you can destroy it mm-hmm. so i try to with my experience to make okay mine with this and mine and how to help and how to build them uh in proper um, yeah mm-hmm. and to be very independent. independent yeah to be independent and to have a mastery of their own technique so they can mm-hmm. be uh, at ease in any in any situation are you as t- less as possible <laughs> as much as possible but you used to teach in person or had you started before covid already to teach online oh uh, no 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 it was uh, we no no we began online with the covid before how, it's much how did that work for you i mean how much did it uh, dif- make things different and was was it uh did it take you time to adapt finally not yeah. It was strange because as soon as the the the, the COVID yeah. came or the confinement confinement, confinement. how do you say it? confinement, confinement. Uh, as soon as it began, I thought, okay, I must help the, them. You know, yeah. I must uh, keep them uh, on on a, on the energy of working and don't be afraid. And so I, as soon as beginning, I said, okay. So I called them all and I said, okay, I propose you this and we can do this. And I think they needed to speak also, to, to have... Um, Interact. So, exactly. It was really interesting and really important. And we, um, it changed, of course, the relation because we, they sent me some, you know, uh, recordings, records. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I, I could make notes. But I think they, 
it was a nice way to, okay, now we have time. We, you have no, you know, uh, uh, deadline. Mm -hmm. So let's go and take it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so work, yeah, the breathe, um, everything we, we can be done because I know them quite well. So I said, okay, uh, let's put uh, on a paper, you know, your positive, your yeah, master, right. Right. exactly, and the weakness. And right. so how to work on, you know, and to, to you really to be clear and to be focused and try to make it, uh, yeah, always better for each part. Right, right. I and find it was, it was really interesting. Right. So... Um, are you teaching all type of voices from basses to contratenors and, and mm -hmm. coloratura? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you find it very difficult for you to adapt to a different voice type or you, it, it comes naturally to you, the technical issues? Hello. I worked a lot with a locopedist or phoniatre. All right. So I'm, I'm starting with the, the person. So I think, I, and, I, and I feel it, it's strange because I don't know if the empathy, but yeah. I feel when the person is singing where I yeah. have to go. Right. How I can help in, in, yeah. in which way. And you even uh, hear the passaggio and such things, right? Yeah, but many, you know, sometimes if someone is coming, yeah, I have a problem with high notes. Mm. But to, for, to find this way, you have to go exactly as, for mm -hmm. example, or, uh, yeah, I have difficulties for, da -ga -da -ga -da, for all the um, right. color, coloratura. Mm -hmm. And I think, okay, so let's have a look on your breathe, breathing, yeah, uh, breathing, all your muscles, mm -hmm. and probably it's a bit too lazy, lazy. And so let's work on it. And that's, you know, it's always by different right. ways to... Right. But just right, but you, always the mind is the, right, the, the, right. the, the most difficult, <laughs> uh, of course. Of course, and it's all connected. Um, <laughs> did, you, did you change your approach, your own approach to your technique or to your singing by teaching? What did you learn by teaching? Oof, oof, I learn, I learn, I ah. I would say I learn. Um, I think I'm a very easygoing girl. <laughs> uh, no, I would say because obviously I had no that much um, um, protection. Yeah. No, so Filters. my yeah. teacher yeah. was asking me something, and I okay, I'm going boom, boom, and yeah. it's you know, and with the phoniat, I I had to change. Many little, you know, the tongue, uh, the jaw, uh, and the breathe. And I learned, I changed all the time, and I, I worked a lot, you know, with... You mean with, for you or for, this, for the... the first students? for me. No, no, first for me. So now I think I, I had to search so much for me. So now I think it's easier to um, adapt my approach to the student. But what does the phoniat do? I mean, is a phoniat what the American would call a, a voice doctor and or laryngologue? And so what, what is it exactly that they do for specifically for singers? The, um, how to have a safe voice, okay. how, to, how to keep it uh, very healthy mm -hmm. and uh, how to manage all the muscles in the body and mm -hmm. to it's it's very it's very you know and unfortunately i would say a lot as a teacher um we don't have time to to work all these details mm -hmm. but i try i try because i think it's very important and i and i would say i learned as a, a, a teacher mm -hmm. that the mind is the most difficult thing to work on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not the body. The body is amazing. Right. They are always is always adjusting and want to um, keep uh, our ears happy. Right. But we need to learn. We need we need to accept uh, 
what can what my body can do for real right. and not put something impose yeah yes yeah do you so i learned that you learned that uh, and 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 yes you are a very um wonderful collaborative colleague i mean i i i i haven't seen you say no i don't do this because not what i do you know you're you're just always trying and 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 understanding and you still have your obviously strong conception that that comes through with students when you have students where you see the problem is really a mental problem that goes way beyond singing like you know someone who is trying to find himself who may be depressive or something like that do you go there or do you use the singing to try to help those issues but at one point you can't totally do that so what what's your technique there or you get away and they say you know what you need to work on this and then you come to me no i i try i try many ways <laughs> in the respect you know in a respect relation sure. i'm not a therapist yes. i i'm not asking about the life you know or what what's going on what is no i can just say okay are you going well what's going on in a way you know it's Right. Can we work? And sometimes I have one, for example, a tenor. Mm. Um, oh. For example, no, but you know, yeah, as right, but, sure. but others, but yes, and he's very fragile, All right. mental. Fra yeah. Yes, and so we worked on it during the COVID. Okay. I said, okay, this. You know, you can't arrive on a real soil and say, oh, I'm sorry. No, I don't feel good. And yeah, yeah. no, it's not professional. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry. When you arrive uh, on the theater, it's like everybody, you know, when you come and work, right. uh, you must be professional for real, say, right. respectful to people around. Mm -hmm. But this difficulty as a singer is everybody, they are so kind, whether you are a soloist, mm -hmm. everybody's so nice and they say, oh, how are you? Right. And Stephanie, what do you do when, when, when obviously the problem is not a vocal problem, but it's a mental problem that goes way beyond the question of the art history and of singing? It's always the problem is, uh, where is the part of the personal problem mm -hmm. or the technical problem mm -hmm. or um, fears or mm -hmm. the stress. Mm -hmm. And so on these different type of problems we have and we have to deal with it um, in which way I can help or not. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I always say, yeah, we always, we are our best enemy mm -hmm. ever. <laughs> we are our proper enemy, of course. Right. So how to make it, okay, stay here. It's good to have a uh, mind, mind, oh, no, scare, oh. Right. And, but I always, but you must manage with the good guy. You know, we have the bad and the good. Mm. And also with the stress, how you can work on it. Because it's, you can work at home as you can be the best singer ever in your bedroom. But unfortunately, with the stress, it destroys 50% of your work. Right. Uh, so how to work on it also? Mm. And that's why I really think the technique must be very clear. Mm. And you have to build um, very clear the text, the importance of the consonant, the voyelle. And mm. like this, you know how to make piano, forte, and to have... And I, I just spent one week as a teacher just now. So, and I said, okay, my job is to put you all the doors open, all the doors of uh, even for the rrr, rrr, for French repertoire. Right. And if they can, you right. know, it's not, you, you don't have one way to sing or one way to express something. Right. So my, my ability is to put you in a way you can choose. Right. With the maestro, with right. the stage director. Right. Uh, and like this, you have no, you have less stress. Right. Because right. you know what to do or not, or but you can boop, 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 right. you can pick. Right, right. I, I think this I is think a, it's yeah, yeah. What what you say about the the air, you know, grassier or gouleyer, this is so true because it becomes almost like 
are you part of that sect or this sect? And if you can't do it, then, you know, you are out and you're wrong. And, and I think this is the first time I hear someone say, well, I, you know, I can do both and, and I'm fine with it. And, and I actually, <laughs> yeah, 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 like this. Um, Stephanie, it's wonderful to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. I can't wait to be on stage with you, hopefully very soon. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> lots, lots, lots of love and, and, and we talk very soon. And take care. I will. <laughs>